All right. Uh, I have 10 o'clock, and it sounds like there are a lot of people still in the, in the hall, but we'll, we should get started. Uh, first of all, welcome to Linux Plumbers Conference. Uh, we don't have an opening plenary, so uh, I've been asked to make a couple of quick announcements that, so that everybody at all the tracks will hear it. I guess people who are still talking out in the hallways won't, but so it goes. Uh, next slide, please. So first of all, I'd like to thank uh, all of our sponsors. Uh, especially our major diamond and platinum sponsors, uh, Facebook, Intel, Google, NetApp. Uh, and as you can see, there's a host of uh, other sponsors as well uh, that uh, are the people, the companies that actually make this event possible. Uh, so thanks to all those companies. Uh, some of them may be your employers. Uh, please let them know what a great job they do in terms of uh, making this event something that happens every year. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so just some quick uh, information. First of all, uh, if you haven't gotten the Wi-Fi yet, it's uh, LF Events uh, with the password Linux1991. Uh, I think it's been that same Wi-Fi for a couple of years now, so may already be in your laptops. Uh, also, I have, to reward, uh, I have to remind everyone about uh, the Code of Conduct, um, which you can see on the link there and which you agreed to when you registered. Um, if there are any issues uh, that you find, please uh, inform one of the members of the planning committee. Uh, they're going to be the people that have a green um, uh, badge, badge uh, ribbon, uh, so you can spot them easily. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, the overall schedule is on the website. If you just go to linuxplumbersconf.org uh, and click on the hamburger menu, you'll see the overall schedule and then the detailed schedule. Uh, everything in this room is going to be on the Kernel Summit um, page. Uh, we start at 10 a.m. Uh, each morning, which is a little bit late, but that's also because uh, dinners go very late into the night because it's Europe. Uh, <laughs> lunch will be at the St. Colinas uh, restaurant at 1.30. Uh, there will be an evening event uh, tonight, uh, uh, which is a welcoming reception at that same restaurant at 7.00. Uh, Wednesday night is the closing party. The buses will be leaving at 7.30, uh, and Tuesday night is on your own. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, for everyone who's going to be presenting, um, please upload your slides to the Linux Plumbers Conf uh, website. Uh, for some of the presenters who, registered, who uh, had their talks um, submitted via email as opposed to on the website, you may not be able to upload uh, the slides. Uh, and if that's the case, send it to me and I'll make sure it gets uh, uploaded uh, on your behalf. Um, yeah, uh, one thing I'll add about the Kernel Summit in particular is uh, we always design the Kernel Summit uh, to have some extra space for uh, any sort of uh, uh, ad hoc talks that people want to have or discussions that start in the hallway and you want to turn them into something bigger without having to do a late night boff session. Um, we do have a handful of slots, mostly on Tuesday and Wednesday. Again, uh, if you're interested in using one of those empty slots, which you can see on the schedule, uh, let me know uh, what the name of the talk would be or you know discussion. Uh, who absolutely needs to be there, and if you have a preferred slot, let me know. Um, slots will be made available on a as available, and if there are conflicts, what seems to be more uh, of, in, of general interest. Uh, so we do have some spare slots that are specifically designed for things that come up uh, during this week. Maybe here, maybe there isn't time at one of the mini cons. Uh, we do have those uh, sort of unconference. Uh, style slots available for people to schedule against. All right, and I think that's the last slide. Ah, yes. Um, so again, the planning committee are the people with the green lanyards. Um, thanks to these people, they're the ones who did all the hard work uh, planning this conference. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it over uh, for our first talk. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so my name is uh, Vlad Reski. I have been working in Sony Mobile. Uh, so today I would like to talk about uh, re reworking of KVA allocated in Linux kernel. So uh, 
uh, basically here you see main topics of my presentation. Uh, first, it will be kind of uh, on a high level because I don't want to go to details because it will take a lot of time. So first one is motivational. Uh, I will talk about motivation. Then I will talk about uh, special requirements for the KVA locator. Uh, then I will talk about current allocation scheme, what is not current anymore, it's previous allocation scheme, because uh, it has been merged into 5.2 kernel. Uh, then we talk about current allocation scheme drawbacks. Then I will talk about allocations, a new allocation scheme. I will talk about uh, performance analysis, performance test results, contributions. And last one, I will talk about uh, wish list or to-do list, what I would like to do. So first one, <clears throat> first of all, uh, as you know, uh, today we are dealing with uh, many data. We do video recording, we do video streaming, we send, we take pictures, we send them between different kind of points between each other. So therefore there is a uh, big demand uh, in big data or high demand in big data. Uh, so for example, uh, if we take a look, look at mobile segment, we will see that we have audio, we have video, we have 8K high resolution. We have 5G areas, so and so on. Second one, uh, it's uh, workloads which are critical to time and latency. So basically, it means that if you have some system, real-time systems, then it will affect you if you use, for example, Vmalloc or something like that. Uh, a part of that, uh, we know that KVA is getting more and more used nowadays. So if, you, if we have a look at uh, Linux source tree, we will see file system, we will see kernel stacks, we will see BPF, per CPU, fork pass, uh, drivers, etc. A part of that, we know that uh, there was a new inter interface introduced in 2017, and the name is KVMALA, KV3 interface. So basically, uh, uh, when regular slab allocator gets failed, for example, due to big size request, we fall back to uh, VMALA allocator and bypass, try to bypass out of memory killer. So, uh, and last motivation, it's about, basically, uh, we had a lot of issues related to allocation time. So sometimes it was really, really terribly slow. And uh, as a result, workloads uh, such as high resolution audio and Bluetooth, we, uh, we had many audio drops, glitches, and so on, due to that problems. Also, we have frame drops in UI, I'm talking about uh, actually Android because I'm, I have been working in Sony Mobile, so all, all, all that related to basically maybe Android devices, something like that. So frame drops, UI, video playback, and so on. So when you start to develop something, uh, you do or you base your work on some uh, special requirements. So the same here. Uh, I had three main requirements. First of all, uh, we have to support zone allocation in KVA space. Then we have to be sequential uh, to maximize locality. And then uh, we would like to minimize external fragmentation. So on this slide, you see that we have three main zones, zone A, zone B, zone C. And this is just an example. For example, uh, you see that uh, VMALOC address space belongs to zone B. So it means that all VMALOC allocations happen there. In that, in that zone. It means that you have start address, you have end address, so end allocate in that range. Yeah, on the bottom you see continuous virtual address space. It spans from one until assigned loan max or from zero. <coughs> so uh, sequential allocation, why it, why it is important. Uh, so it's important because we would like to maximize locality. What does it mean? It means that if you have, for example, you, you see two different pictures, picture A and picture B. On picture A, you see sequential allocation. So it's easy. You allocate step by step if you can. It, if you can do that, we would like to do that. And uh, for example, we have zone zero and we have zone one that is include, included in zone zero. In, in case of sequential allocation, you see that we waste a space sequentially, one by one. So it's on a high level, but basically it, it, it is like that. And in case of random allocation, you see that we can uh, waste space from zone zero, and also we can waste space from zone one. And uh, why it is bad? It is bad due to many aspects. But for example, main aspect is uh, that we, if we waste 
uh, space that belongs to zone one, it means that users which uh, allocate from zone, zone one may fail, may get nothing. Also, it's important from a TLB caching point of view, flushing. So the full sequation, sequential allocation is important. Uh, then uh, minimize external fragmentation and why that is important as well. First of all, we would like to reduce implementation, implementation overhead. It means that as less uh, memory objects inside we have, as less memory we need. So uh, for bookkeeping our data structures to implement, implement implementation overhead, bookkeeping and so on. Uh, second one, we would like to satisfy an allocation request. It means that uh, if you have many free blocks, it, uh, but they are too small uh, to accomplish allocation request. And the last one, it's about improving allocation time. Uh, basically, uh, if we have a lot of fragments, some, uh, usually it means that uh, an allocation gets, an allocation time gets increased. But, uh, <coughs> so, now I will talk about current, uh, current allocation scheme. So this, uh, <coughs> it's on a high level. <coughs> and on a high level, we have uh, two uh, main data structures. We have uh, a red black tree. Uh, we have a linked, regular linked list. And uh, we allocate from gaps, using gaps or holes. Uh, all busy blocks are sorted in ascending order. Uh, so basically, the same happens with linked list. Uh, so uh, all blocks are sorted in, in order of increasing addresses. So this is the same like red black tree. So we duplicate. But actually, to maintain linked list, it's not. It's not. There is no. There is no overhead. I would say. Overhead. So also, I need to mention that each time you allocate, uh, you place a new fragment to our data structures. So here you see a small example. We have five busy blocks, and we allocate based on gaps or based on holes. You see three holes. Uh, so on a high level, if we want to allocate, we just uh, sh we should iterate over over the blocks, and and try to find fitting base, first fitting base. So on this picture, you see that uh, on top of this linked list, we got red black tree. Uh, that is used to uh, to find uh, busy blocks when we want to deallocate it. So for all at log n time. So you see that two uh, first gaps or holes they didn't fit, but we found a third one that fits. So what we need to do we need to create a fragment and place it to data our data structures. And you see that B6 it starts from 12. So I hope it's clear. So it's uh, pretty easy. And uh, of course, drawbacks. Uh, drawbacks, uh, uh, so it's over fragmented. So if we have a lot of allocations and uh, it's, uh, it's terribly fragmented, and to do some search in that fragmented uh, data structure is really, really complicated. So the four complexity is O at N, what is what is not acceptable, I would say. So a new allocation scheme. Uh, first of all, we allocate from uh, uh, from free blocks. Uh, so we build a, a memory layout during boot up phase. So uh, the new allocation method uses an augmented red black tree. Uh, so uh, all free blocks are sorted in ascending order by that tree. Also, we use a linked list. And we need it. Uh, we need it when we uh, delocate. So basically, when we delocate, we find a free spot. Or we, we find a spot in the in the tree. Knowing the parent and direction, left or right, we can ide identify next element, future next element, and then we can access to previous. And then we can check if we can merge it or not. So uh, nodes are augmented with the size of maximum available block in left or right subtree. So we have a node. And we have maximum subtree size. It can be on the right or left subtree. Complexity. So as a result, it becomes O at log n. 
So this is just an example. We uh, built a new memory layout. Uh, we built a memory layout during boot up phase. So you see, it consists of five blocks, three blocks. We don't locate from gaps or from busy blocks, or from holes. So uh, KVI space spans from one until unsigned loan max. So and that's it. And that's it. And also, it depends on arch, of course. So it can be one big solid uh, space during boot up. But of course, af afterwards it will be splitted when you allocate. Uh, so, uh, the new model consists of uh, two main data structures. It's red black tree, uh, as I mentioned before, augmented, augmented red black tree. Then we have a linked list. Each node uh, consists of three main parameters. Uh, first one, it's a start address. For example, N2 start from N1, start from 2. Uh, it has size 2, and maximum subtree size, it has 2. So, it's uh, the most left node, it's a leaf. So I hope it's clear and uh, go to next. How we allocate? Basically, we start from, we start tree traversal from the root node. Uh, then we uh, try to check left subtree max size and we would like to follow left as much as possible because on the left subtree we have lowest address. And uh, since we would like to be sequential, uh, like it's sequentially, we must or we have to follow left subtree as soon as, as much as we can. So follow the left subtree if request is uh, less or equal available size. And then we try to uh, uh, go towards the block that fits. When the block is found, we split it and there are three main cases. I will talk about them later. So this is a block diagram of search algorithm. It's a uh, uh, it's a bit, it's a bit not correct. Actually, there are some mistakes, but uh, I hope it will be clear. So we start search from N4. Uh, then we try to uh, get left some tree max size for N4. For example, uh, of N2, it's 12. Then we, if we know that uh, it's enough for our needs, we follow left to N2. Go yes to what yes, and then. Uh, we try to check N1 as well. So left subtree, and this is N1. If, if there is no any free space there, we stop, and we should check N2 before going to right, because N2 has lower, lowest, lower address than N3, because N3 goes to right. And the blocks are sorted in ascending order. Uh, yeah, basically, and then if N2 do doesn't fit, then we go to N3, check and three because it's a leaf. If it fits, okay. If it's not, then we are not, we didn't find anything. But I will talk about uh, here on more detail. So uh, here you, you see two, uh, two pictures. A and B. Uh, on A, we allocate one page. On B, we allocate four pages. So uh, first of all, please, uh, Keep in mind that we have a node, and the node consists of three main parameters, as I mentioned before. It's a block start address, block size, and subtree max size. And we populate our tree or fix our tree um, uh, by subtree max size. It should be correctly updated because knowing that we know direction where to follow. <coughs> so, A. First of all, we need to find the block, three blocks. We start from N4. We uh, get left subtree size, check N2, and it has 12, if you see. It has 12, what is enough for our need. We need only one page. So we follow left. <coughs> then we check N1, because we would like to follow left as much as we can. Check N1. <coughs> the same. Uh, it has maximum subtree size as 2. And uh, eventually, uh, it has size 2, because it's a left. Uh, sorry, it's a leaf. So we go to N1. Uh, it's a leaf, we, we can't follow, we are on the bottom. So next step, splitting. Uh, and what, you, what we do, you see it becomes 1-1. One, one. Uh, so, and then why 1-1? Why one, one? Because we uh, split the block, it, it was two. Uh, we need one page, it becomes one. And then we update maximum sub three size for N1, and it becomes one, because it's a leaf. Then let's have a look how we locate four pages. We start from N4, as the same. 
uh, we check N2, maximum substrate size. It has 12 pages. Uh, then we go to N2. We are in N2. After that, we check N1. And uh, uh, we see that it has two pages only and as a maximum. So that is not accept acceptable for us. Uh, we can't follow left subtree. So therefore, we have to check N2 before going to right subtree because N2 has lower address, start address of free block. Uh, it has three pages, what is not enough, we need four. So therefore, we follow right subtree. It has 12 pages and it's a leaf. It's our last chance to have a look if it fits or not. So it fits because it has 12 pages. After that, when we found, we have to split it. And you see how we split it. So uh, uh, basically, when we split it, it becomes eight as a size of three blocks. It used to be 12. After that, when we split, we have to fix the tree to upper levels because the tree is augmented. And, uh, and what we do? Last step is updating. It's better here. So uh, we update N3, uh, trying to calculate maximum subtree size for N3, N3. And it becomes eight. It used to be 12. It becomes eight. Then we follow upstairs uh, to upper levels, and we check N2 as a parent node. We calculate maximum subtree for parent node. Uh, we have two and eight. Maximum is eight, located in the right subtree. Set it to eight. After that, we follow uh, to N4. It's a parent node of N2. And then we calculate maximum subtree size for N4. And uh, we take maximum between N2 and N5. And it's 11. So therefore, we set maximum subtree size to 11. And it's located in the right subtree. So after that, it's done. The tree is correctly updated, and we can use it further. Uh, so there are three main cases. When, when the block is found, there are three main cases how we split it. It's like a brick. We can split left edge. We can split right edge. We can split somewhere in the middle. So in this picture, you see that we uh, found the block, and this is F F3. It implies that F1, F2 uh, didn't fit, even though uh, it looks like on the picture it should fit to in F2, but it's just picture, a bit <coughs> maybe wrong. So we shrink F3 and give that part to the user, give back. So that's it. On the next step, uh, sorry, second case, it's about when uh, the block fully fits, it's F3. We just uh, remove it from our internal data structures and give it back to user. That's it, easy. Last one, uh, it's about when uh, the free block uh, uh, is split somewhere in the middle. It happens uh, because, of, uh, because of alignment request, because we can different permissive parameters when we allocate. We have size, we have alignment, we have vstart, and we have, yeah, probably that's it. Three main. So it's happens, it happens because of alignment. Uh, we split it, and you see that we shrink F3. Middle part we give back to the user, and remaining part N we place back to our uh, to our data structures internally. So, uh, summarizing. So since the tree is augmented, augmented red black tree, we have to populate and maintain subtree max size for each node. And it happens in three cases when we update the tree. When we, when the block is split, it's allocation pass. When uh, the block is inserted to the tree, it's a free pass. And uh, last one, it's uh, when the block is merged, it's a merging pass. So please note that uh, it doesn't mean that we uh, populate or propagate maximum subtree size uh, up to the root node. Basically, we calculate uh, parent nodes, and we see if it's correctly normalized, we give up, we stop because uh, it doesn't make sense to go further, because further everything will be updated correctly. Uh, the allocation, it's on a high level, because I don't want to go to details, because uh, it will be 
may be complicated and uh, may be not so easy to understand. So therefore, uh, on a high level, uh, what we do, uh, basically we have a free blocks. We have a uh, uh, red black tree that keeps free blocks. Before, when we deallocate, we find a spot in that tree. So what does it mean? It means we find a parent node and then, if, then we find a direction, lean direction, direction. It can be right or left. So based on that, we can identify next node or next element, future next element. And knowing future, we can ident identify a previous element. So four all uh, at one time. It's fast. So you see uh, four allocated blocks. What we do when we deallocate, we just insert it to our data structures. We can't merge it with a previous element or with next one. So uh, here uh, on, a, on a third row, you see that we uh, do the same with the right, the most right one. So we can't merge it, we just insert it. Uh, next, uh, you see that we can uh, merge with previous and next element, and then we do that. And as a result, we get bigger block. And last one, it's when uh, the most left one is freed, we uh, get one big solid space. So it's easy. So performance analysis. Uh, when uh, I started to uh, do rework, I, I had to base on something to analyze performance impact. So therefore, uh, because of that re reason, uh, I developed a special micro benchmark uh, to analyze performance impact of Vimalak allocator. Uh, so it, it is available since 5.1 kernel. Uh, it, it has been integrated with kernel self-test suite. It is available under two states, the tools testing self-test VM. The name is uh, testvmalloc.sh. It's a kernel model. Uh, so you can use it to simulate different kind of uh, workloads, like uh, random workloads, allocation workloads uh, on single CPU, on many CPUs, and, uh, and so on. So uh, two modes on a high level, performance analysis mode and stressing mode. So if we have a look at this, uh, sorry, on this simple slide, uh, I have my computer, this one. If I run it, uh, I use testvmalloc.sh. Uh, I have i5 uh, 3320M machine. And if we uh, have a look at taking time to complete the test, we will see that in first, uh, in default configuration, it takes 160 minutes. On, in case of rework, it takes three minutes, so maybe 30 times faster. Uh, what is, I think it's more, it's good. So uh, on this plot, uh, you see, <coughs> on the right side, you see four CPUs. It's a random allocation on all CPUs simultaneously. And this is, uh, on the bottom, we have number of samples. We have one per second, so test duration is one, 120 seconds. And here we see, we see allocation time in nanoseconds. Average per sample. So what we can say? Uh, we can say that we have a big deviation between min minimum and maximum. So if we, uh, the minimum value here is approximately 25 microseconds. So it's the minimum time uh, that is needed uh, per one allocation. Uh, then we have a maximum, and maximum is maybe four milliseconds, can be what is really, really, really long. Uh, and uh, I would say it's not acceptable for, uh, for many reasons and for many, in many areas like real time system and so on. And this is on my laptop that has, I don't know, maybe two giga years. And average is approximately 400 microseconds. Hmm? No, 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 it's different. It's different. I simu uh, not the same. I, uh, it's a random allocation and different test cases, and uh, each CPU try to run a different test case. And uh, uh, each test case has a special allocation method and so on. But it's randomly allocation and randomly size and, and random different alignment and so on. It's not uh, just one page allocation. And here we see uh, what happens in case of rework. Uh, the same, we have four CPUs, we have number of samples, we have allocation time in nanoseconds. Uh, it's a random allocation simulation. 
here we see that we need, so the deviation is smaller. We have maybe seven microseconds against 25 microseconds. So, and on the next plot, it will be more easier to understand. And on the next plot, uh, <coughs> uh, red line, you see it's a rework. Default is blue line. And uh, uh, in case of default, it's, uh, it's kind of zigzags. It's, uh, you see that a maximum can be four milliseconds. And in average, it's, it's approximately 400 microseconds. In case of uh, rework, uh, we have maybe 10 microseconds as an as a average. So I hope that uh, uh, there is difference, actually, and big difference. Contribution. Vimalak uh, benchmark and stress test yield. So I contributed it, and it is in 5.1 kernel. Uh, some, some links, no, not all of them, just some links. Uh, stability fixes, uh, which I found during test driver, during analysis uh, of KVA locator, I found many issues with that. Uh, yeah, they were also merged to into 5.1 kernel. Then we have a rework, and we got it in 5.2 kernel. Some links, not all of them, but some basic links. And last one. I would like to talk about what I would like to do. So uh, first of all, uh, it's a, a log contention because uh, nowadays we have systems which consist of many CPUs, not only one. If we take a look at this, at this picture, so this is my, uh, my computer, Intel Xeon. I have 3.7 gigahertz, I have, I have uh, 12 CPUs. If I uh, simulate uh, a different kind of workloads on all of them simultaneously on all CPUs and run perf, we will see that we have a high log contention in, uh, here, in native quit spin log slow pass. And if we try to annotate, annotate that symbol, we will see that uh, we uh, spend 72% in pause instruction waiting. So uh, therefore, I would like to get rid of one global spin lock. So how, how, how we can do that? We can split it. So uh, according to new scheme, new allocation method, uh, we can split it easily because uh, we have three independent states for our VMAP area internal object. So it can be in three different states, in A, B, C. It can be in BZ3 only, so we can protect BZ3 by, uh, by any log primitive. Then we can protect a free tree, which is used uh, for allocation. We can protect it for the same uh, using any log primitive. And then we have lazily freed areas. So we also pro can protect it by uh, another spin log or whatever read lock or write lock. So therefore, uh, the first thing I would like to do is splitting. I, I, I think it will help uh, when it comes to high log contentions. Uh, but of course, uh, there will be uh, uh, other, other work that has to be done in order to improve uh, and uh, reduce uh, log contention, not, not only this one. And this one is more about uh, research and development. It's more about analysis, uh, how we can actually improve our model and how we can uh, build a new uh, model for, alloc alloc for VMALOC allocator. So first of all, uh, uh, maybe it makes sense to use a more efficient data structure. So I'm thinking about to use B3 for organizing free memory layout. Uh, maybe it's a bit complicated for many reasons. Uh, first of all, we don't have any uh, particular B3 implementation in Linux kernel. We have many B3 implementations in file system and so on, but it will be kind of special. We need to adapt it for our model, for memory model. So therefore it will be definitely different. 
And why B3? Uh, first of all, and uh, on a high level, it's because of uh, I would like to utilize uh, cache performance as much as we can. So therefore, then uh, splay tree, it also can be chosen. Uh, for example, I know that um, in uh, BSD operating systems or Microsoft, they use splay tree to manage uh, allocations. But unfortunately, I don't have any uh, result I have results, but I haven't composed them to this presentation. And um, but I, I I need to say that uh, using Spy Tree is not a way forward. So, uh, but this is on a high level. I don't have details here. Yeah. Ah, sorry. Then uh, to implement Lazy Tree fix ups, I think it's easy to implement. What we need is just uh, when we find a, found a block, we allocate from. We don't need to populate each time we allocate because uh, we need to do it only once when we switch to another block. So when we switch, we just populate previous and that's it, we are done. We just update the path because if we allocate from one and the same block, the path is the same. So it's easy to implement. But I'm not sure uh, uh, how much it, we will gain. I mean, when it comes to performance. We will gain, but I'm not sure how much. Last one, uh, it's about uh, to cache last access node to optimize traversal. Basically, we can cache last access node. And uh, if we have the same permissive parameters on the next allocation, so the same parameters, so it means that we can check the same or previous node fast, uh, fastly. If it's okay, if it fits, we just allocate and that's it. Uh, and uh, why it, it is important, or yeah, more or less important, because we would like to uh, optimize traversal. We don't want to traversal. So hope it's clear. Uh, I think I don't have anything more. So thank you for attention. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, your test case is random allocations. Yeah. Um, you can you can simulate random. You can uh, simulate sequential. Whatever you want. So. Uh, anyway, so. Um, you know, I'm wondering, I, and, that, and that, of course that's very interesting. In, in, in some ways it might be the hardest thing, but it might not be the most interesting. Um, more interesting might be, you know, if we had a trace of a particular workload. Like, uh, for, for example, uh, propose your last uh, optimization, it might be very interesting to have a lot of allocations that are the same size at the same time, um, because that might be how the system's used in real life. and and random might actually be making us so solve a problem that we, we might not really yeah, have. Yeah, I see your point. Actually, uh, I provide that plot just to show you the difference, and that's it. I haven't provided you uh, real workloads, even though I have it, I can provide it. And as an example, uh, it's uh, high resolution audio and uh, audio drops. So where can you, you can hear glitches. Um, actually, um, when I uh, when I submit this patch set, uh, all, all these patches to LKML, I provided uh, exactly uh, um, particular workload related to uh, high resolution plane audio, where you can take your hand forward and 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 hear glitches. And this is real. Uh, this is real workload. So we have real workloads. Even though uh, I didn't uh, I didn't uh, show you, I wanted to. I play it, but I am not sure if I have it some sound speaker, so I am not sure that it's, uh, I think that showing that uh, random allocations, there is a different, big difference. So I, I saw that it's enough, but there are, there are uh, yeah, real workloads. So I was wondering just whether 
uh, you check. So if you are, for example, you have the, your real workload of playing audio. So what is the workload on the virtual memory allocator yeah? when you are playing audio? So what is the frequency of allocations? Do you have some numbers about that? I was just interested, like, what is the, the load problem on is, the... Uh, the problem is that uh, it shouldn't be frequent. It really doesn't matter. It can be as frequent and it can be as not frequent. The problem is uh, that if it becomes over fragmented, then... Oh, I understand that the latency of the individual allocation gets high with the old allocator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's good that you implemented the like RB3 so that the latency of the allocation goes down. That, yeah, that, that's yeah, yeah. when the space gets fragmented. That, that's good. But then, for example, you speak about scalability improvements. Yeah. Those really make sense only if the frequency of allocation is really high. Because if the frequency is low, then you don't care about scalability, basically. Yeah, but of course, it depends on how much you allocate, of course. It's like, uh, for so example... That's yeah. why I was asking, actually, about the frequency Yeah, for example, if you have, a, a, like, servers, web servers, where yeah. we, for example, do a lot of forks, and as you know, for example, fork pass uh, make use uh, Vimalloc allocator for yes. uh, to keep uh, a task stack in a uh, Vimalloc space. Yes, sure. So therefore, of course, it depends. But I haven't analyzed, for example, like web servers and so on. But it will uh, affect, of course, allocation time and. Uh, yeah, but even if with web servers, you will have like maybe hundreds of forks per second, yeah, which is still very low load to the allocator, like hundreds. For, for even if you have lots of if CPUs. You, if you have but a yeah, uh, just that I wanted to point out that probably you should look into whether it will actually... So of course you can create a bench, like your kernel module benchmark, which will stress the code enough that the scalability improvements will be visible. There is a question whether any real life workload will actually benefit from that, so. Yeah, any real life, as I mentioned before, we had problems with high resolution audio, we had problems with uh, frame drops in UI, in Android phones. Yeah, but that's, that's problem with fragmentation and allocation uh, it's latency. Problem. That's not a problem with like scalability. Ah, no, 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 yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, one last question. Um, firstly, thank you for the vMalloc test module. It's been very helpful for... I've been doing KASAN on vMalloc. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the lock changes that you want to make. Um, what, how does it work now with lazy freeing? At, what happens if you have lazy freeing happening and an allocation happening at the same time? What, how is that protected? So at the same time, uh, we have one global uh, spin lock, and that is bad. So if we lazily free pages and try to allocate at the same time, we just uh, sit and smoke. Yeah. So therefore, uh, uh, with a new model, uh, we can uh, split uh, to three main data structures. So you can simultaneously free and allocate, and, uh, uh, and yeah, free, allocate, and lazily free. So, so uh, it will be important, but it's not implemented yet. It will not be hard to implement because, uh, because the model actually allows us to do that. And previous model, for example, when we used uh, GAPS-based allocator, so uh, the problem is, uh, first of all, it's over-fragmented. Second, we have a problem that if we allocate from GAP, uh, uh, there is two main hidden uh, things inside that tree. First one, it's... Uh, gaps, free gaps, and second one, it's mapped areas. And we can't actually split it because we have one uh, item or one, one, one entity. So therefore, since we have now three, we can split it. Yeah, I hope you, I answered your question. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I think we're out of time. Uh, we need to allow time for our next speaker to come up. Uh, so thank you very much. You're welcome.